Ha, ha, ha. Hi everyone, Hothany Scartano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Quadeca record, I Didn't Mean to Haunt You. This is a brand new LP from rapper, singer, songwriter, composer, producer, Mr. Benjamin Lasky, aka Quadeca, who has long been a figure on the YouTube rap scene and has built a very strong and passionate fan base. Being so, I have been aware of him and his work for a while now, but it's only been until recently that I have taken it seriously enough to start uh, reviewing it more closely, specifically last year when he dropped the record From Me To You, which stylistically was a huge change of pace for Quadeca. Of course, there were elements of hip hop in the mix on the track list on this one, but also, alternative R&B, emo, art pop, which occasionally gave off uh, slight Joji vibes on particular tracks. Regardless, though, it was still impressive that Ben was able to accomplish what he did on this ambitious record, especially with how grandiose a lot of the production was. While I didn't end up loving the album, it did seem like Ben legitimately had opened up some floodgates on this project, and I was waiting to see how deep the water would run once it all washed out. And on this new LP, I think the answer to uh, that, that depth is is we are drowning as I didn't mean to haunt you is a wholly unique blend of hip-hop emo folk bedroom pop lo-fi stuff experimental psych ambient jams and somehow Ben brings an interesting mix of a couple of features on this thing uh, ranging from Danny Brown to the Sunday service choir and uh, percussionist Thor Harris of Shearwater and Swans fame but even before the features it was apparent this was going to be another very different release for Quadeca with the release of Born Yesterday, which from the moment I heard this track, I was blown away, had no idea, even with the last record, that something on this level was within his range. As this track is not giving off YouTube rapper vibes at all, it's more like a new Bandcamp DAW whiz kid dropping the next multi-genre songwriter opus that everyone in the underground is going to freak out about for the next six months. With emotive vocals, noisy sound effects, curious electronics, a cutting spoken word passage, a really interesting little subtle Beatles interpolation, plus a tearjerker build of vocal harmonies. Truly an immense track that makes me feel like I'm being sucked up into the rapture. Then there's the way the following track, The Memories We Lost in Translation, kind of carries on a lot of those same vibes with an extra extra helping of, uh, you know, instrumental interlude, which just reinforces the previous track, and obviously you couldn't kind of get that uh, little extension with it just as a single. And yeah, hearing these two tracks back to back makes me enjoy Born Yesterday even more in the context of the record. There's also Tell Me a Joke, which was another great teaser from the LP. It's a gentle, weary ballad in 3-4. Sounds like something a young Connor Oberst would write, but instead of cutting his teeth in the Omaha DIY scene, he was uh, terminally online, took a lot of psychedelics, and was deeply obsessed with the Beatles album Revolver, and yeah, it's like if those things happened. Plus with lyrics like knock knock, who's there, tell me a joke, something feels off, was it words that I spoke, or was it something else, the door must have broke, how can it be, it's a setup, the punchline was me? That is so heart-wrenchingly emo, I can't even begin to formulate impressive words to describe how heart-wrenchingly emo it is. Add on to this the glitchy and theatrical production that surrounds the song, it just kind of shows you how detail-oriented Ben is uh, on this record. Which is refreshing because some tracks from the last LP, while they did their best to sound larger than life and atmospheric, the end result was often very washed out and I think a little sonically deficient. I didn't mean to haunt you sidesteps that with more textures, details, and switch-ups. Case in point, the opener, sorry for for dying, which, truth be told, I do find to be a little disjointed, but far from boring with its heavenly glossy keys that grace the intro, verses that meld together elements of piano balladry, hip-hop, and alternative R&B. There are some crazy ambient and industrial passages to follow from here, too. The whole thing may be a little convoluted, but still very evocative and makes me feel like I'm spiraling down some kind of surrealist rabbit hole, leading straight into a dense, syrupy ocean of loosely arranged instrumental fragments. Now, sometimes those fragments fragments and the effects they are awash in 
coalesce in a way that feels very powerful and heavy, like on the immense Don't Mind Me. There are pockets of this track that hit me with the instrumental elegance and pop appeal of like a recent Porter Robinson track, but with a much moodier approach. Then there are other tracks on the LP where all of those extra bells and whistles feel more like a distraction, or maybe even overpowering like on the song Picking Up Hands, where the vocals and guitar bits in the first half feel especially boxed in and tamped down. They just don't have as much bite as I think they could. So there is kind of a give and take there, but I do think Quideca hits a good balance between these things most of the time. The song How Settling is certainly an example of that, and also an example of Quideca switching things up in an interesting way in the second half of the LP. The various ornate experimental arrangements surrounding the song on this track are beautiful. They eventually come together into a really intense build that eventually gives way to these horror movie pianos, setting the stage for some harrowing vocal passages from Quideca, and also a gnarly Danny Brown verse whose bars uh, really reinforce the nightmarish imagery of the song. Knots is kind of like a tense, almost post-punky switch up for the record. It's very electronic, it's very glitchy, kind of feels like a song Liars would have produced recently, especially on a record like Mess, even down to some of the vocal effects used. Not super novel, but cool that uh, Ben could pull something like this off. I much prefer the song Fantasy World, which kicks off like a very forlorn piano ballad with droning bass notes and sad little intervals and chords on top. Quideca's tired voice is just barely getting the notes out. It's quite melodramatic, but also compelling. But what is most stunning about this this track is the elegant and intense build of instrumentation around the midpoint, maybe the best climax on the entire LP, and the whole thing reaches this maddening level of saturation and distortion to the point where it feels like an old Have a Nice Life track or a Microphones track. There's a genuinely beautiful harshness to it that uh, I love a lot. The drone this track coasts out on at the end is great, uh, plus add to that the existential lyrics that uh, <laughs> really seem like Ben is going through it right now. Meanwhile, Fractions of Infinity is a beautiful little calm after the storm of, of that song. Once again, the Sunday Service Choir feature on this track, and I think they add a lot to the song. The gradual progression of the track is very nice. The bittersweet melody is nice as well. I love that Quideca is able to add these little uh, earnest rap verses into the mix on tracks like this on occasion and not uh, sort of take the song out of whatever vibe the instrumental is creating. Despite so many elements of these tracks seemingly coming from different places stylistically, they all come together in a very complimentary way. But it's the closer uh, Cassini's division that I ended up being a little lost on, honestly. The basic piano arpeggios and kind of distant muffled noises, instrumental fragments and sound effects, uh, all of them I think made for one of the least interesting instrumentals here. Plus a lot of the words being spoken in this spoken word passage read quite a bit like a bad slam poetry that you would read at an open mic uh, to an audience of 12. In the second half, the instrumental changes into uh, just all these swirling tones and weeping, which I guess I get given uh, the way that crying kind of plays into the story of this song, but I, I don't really think it's um, you know a flattering addition sonically to the sound palette here, which is already quite a mess. The only part of the track that I really liked was the end where uh, the song slowly and subtly kind of shifts into this wall of static, which if you're paying attention to the lyrics on this track and uh, on previous moments on the record too, uh, kind of makes sense, cutting to static rather than fading to black. So even if I wasn't crazy about this song as its own standalone compositional piece, I do have to give it to Ben for coming together with a record uh, that's quite thematic and conceptual and doing his best to tie all those themes up at the finish. With all of that being said, I think this is a very good album from Ben, very good album from Quideca, definitely better than the last LP, and he seemed to have, you know, taken quite a bit from the positive responses uh, that tracks like Sisyphus got, pretty much built on the artsy, progressive, and larger-than-life sounds uh, that he struck on that track, and just carried that over onto this record in a big way. Some of his best songs ever land on this record. This is, to me, his best work to date, and only makes me more excited to hear more from him in the future. Now, with that being said, are there some tracks that I think pale in comparison to others? Yes, most certainly. Do I think the ending was far less impressive than the beginning? Y yes, also yes. But still, I can absolutely see why this record is getting the hype and the attention that it is currently. It is absolutely deserving of it. Even if personally, due to a few tracks I'm not that crazy about, I didn't end up really loving it as much as many are right now. Feeling a strong seven on this LP? Tran? Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Quideca, 
forever. 